Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnitin Podcast. This is the podcast where we had digital discussions the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, TV, and film, of course. And I am joined by an actress who you might recognize as Deputy Staub on Siren on Freeform. Woo-hoo! The show about mermaids. <laughs> We're with Tammy Gillis. Tammy, welcome to Pop Turnitin. Hi, thanks so much for having me. No problem. Uh, you know, recently had Hannah um, Levine on the show. Who is also on Siren? Siren, and yep. it's just she plays Janine. It's just unbelievable the fan engagement of that show on social media. Oh, it's amazing! We love our fans so much, and like, there's, I know I get so geared up not only to watch the episode and see what ended up on in that episode, but also just to engage with the fans uh, because every Thursday. Uh, we are live tweeting it's the more so the eastern time but uh it is so much fun just to see and hear people's reactions and like they have the best i always say it wrong what is it gifs gifs <laughs> so some yeah, of the gi- i don't know GIF, if there's a GIF, official eh. yeah some of the things that they come up with is just unbelievable we yeah it's so much fun absolutely when did you kind of decide that going on camera and portraying these characters and making them come to life was something that you wanted to do? Well, being from a very small town in Manitoba, I grew up in a town of, at that time, and it was 800 people. And now there's about 400 people that live there. Where's this? It's called McCreary. And it's about two and a half hours northwest of Winnipeg. So it's very rural. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of, you know, acting opportunity there. There wasn't, uh, I, the most famous people I'd ever met were probably like hockey players. <laughs> and I'd never met like an actor. <laughs> it was always, the, you know, something you watched on TV or in the theater. And it was never really something that I thought was a possibility of having a career ad. Um, and I got sort of bitten by the acting bug. I'd always kind of like, did put on these little shows for attention. Um, but my uh, a new English teacher moved to our town and she started a drama club. And I immediately jumped at that. And um, I was in, I think, a play every single year until I graduated. And then I went to university initially to become a lawyer. And I realized they're not like what you see on TV. It's pretty boring, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I was scouted. I was out one night with my friends and I got scouted by a modeling agent. And I wasn't really interested in the modeling, but through them, I took some acting classes and I booked a bunch of commercials. And I thought, well, this is something that I like. And then I was just meeting other actors and people that were pursuing it. And Then I did an MOW with Chad Lowe and, um, oh my goodness, what's her name? She's the mom on Gossip Girl. Um, We look very, Kelly Rutherford. We look very, very similar. Uh, And they were both like, you can do this if this is a dream of yours. And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I'm just a small town Canadian girl. Um, But they really convinced me that it was a possibility. And the rest is history. Do you kind of see yourself as like that unofficial like Canadian spokesperson when you like show up to set and where you're with all these people that grew up, you know, maybe like L.A. or like New York. And you're like, hey, I'm from Canada. (laughs) Well... Well, I hope so, because... Well, a lot of the stuff that I've shot, though, like, the majority of the stuff I've shot has all been in Canada. So, and it, like, and I've been really lucky because I've worked all across Canada. I've worked in Winnipeg, I've worked in Montreal, I've worked in Toronto, um, and then a lot, obviously, in Vancouver. Uh, Because I just interviewed Elena Wolf. She's on a show called Star Falls that is, uh, like, a Nickelodeon, um, it's a Nickelodeon show, but it it was, Mm -hmm. like, a... Um, it was a Canadian production, but Nickelodeon picked it up, which is huge. Oh, yeah, that's massive. Um, but she says every time she goes down to L.A. to shoot or the film, she's she always sees herself as, like, the Canadian spokesperson. She wants people to know <laughs> she's from there. I, I like that. <laughs> no, I like that, too. Um... You're, we're seeing a lot of like it's just it's been it's been a crazy couple of weeks for television shows. Oh my goodness! 
<laughs> shows Thursday in... and Friday? Man, Friday was cutthroat. It was just like one yeah. after the other. I was like, what is going on? And it, it, it's one of those things where do you think that's kind of a testament of like just how the industry is going where it's so there's just so many shows out there and so many opportunities and there's shows that can get re, like re-resurrected from other networks and it's just like it's crazy because i think it was what like 17 or 18 shows that got canceled like a couple of days yeah, ago was, and there's it was a little wild and like some would get canceled and then like an hour later they'd be like no no, no we're gonna actually renew it <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I remember, like, um, Vinyl with Bobby Cannavale on HBO um, originally got renewed. Like, they renewed it, but then they canceled it. That's so, so cruel. It, just, it, it happens, for sure. And Ghost Wars that you were, that, that you were on has recently been canceled as well on Sci-Fi. Yes. Um, and what I like, though, is Netflix has kind of created a role where Ghost Wars was on Sci-Fi... But it was on Netflix as well. And I, yeah. there's some people that might not know that it was on sci-fi. Like, people might well, just... Well, I think, like, a big sort of... I don't really want to say problem. But it wasn't... Like, a lot of people didn't even know it existed in terms of marketing and that kinds of stuff for, for Ghost Words. There wasn't, there wasn't any money for it. So they didn't really do it. And then people kind of got on board and were watching it on Netflix, especially binging it on Netflix. And then we started to get a little bit of momentum in the fa- and a fan base growing. And then by that time, though, sci-fi was already like, well, we don't have the numbers, et cetera. That's, like, that's one of the really, really amazing things about Siren, I think, is that Freeform is really marketing it And I feel like, and they've been marketing it and pushing it for, you know, months before we were even airing. So I feel like they really, really believe in our show. I think the fans have really grasped it too. There is a Siren podcast. I know. There's like all these, and (laughs) what I love, and everybody, please follow me on social media and and come and tweet with us on Thursdays. We love engaging with you guys. Um, but I love it when all of a sudden I'll get tagged in something and then there's like a new Siren fan site about something and then a Siren podcast and then all these things. Like, it's amazing. Nostalgia is a powerful thing, too, because um, YouTube Red released Cobra Kai, um, which is the spinoff of Karate Kid. And if you have not seen it, it's unbelievable. Like, it is, it's so good. Like, the writing in this show is incredible. Like, I, I they really nailed it. And, because a lot of people, it came out, they didn't know what to, they didn't know what to expect, right? It's like, you know, over 30 years later, how are these characters going to be? And it's fantastic. Um, so, my question to you is, what do you kind of think of, you know, the, the power of nostalgia? And do you think that social media has elevated it? Or has it always kind of been the same? There's always been... For example, like, I have some guests on the show that were on some pretty, like, iconic television shows back in the day or, or movies, and people just lose their minds. And oh, yeah. It's just like a formula, like a recipe for success, like, almost. You know what I mean? Where, like, we keep Coogan from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead and Adventures of Babysitting was on Pop Turnip a couple weeks ago. Oh, cool. And it's just... So what do you think of the role of nostalgia in all of this? I think, like... I think it takes us back to probably like I feel like a lot of the time it's a really happy time you know and people love remembering that it's like I am a huge like fan of pictures and when I was growing up when I was a kid when I was in high school when I was in university I took tons and tons of pictures of stuff and it's just like sitting down and going through all of that and looking at and remembering those times I feel like movies and television shows help us do that as well because you know like any of the movies from the 80s come on I'm like I'm done (laughs) <laughs> what was I doing? I'm not doing that anymore. You know, <laughs> like Dirty Dancing comes on. It's like, forget about it. I've seen it like a thousand times, but it gives me a good feeling. Um, and I think like that's part of what film and television does. So I think nostalgia plays a huge thing. I'm definitely going to check that out now on YouTube, Red. Are you kidding me? I love Karate Kid. It, so. it's, it's very good. Like <laughs> really, really good. Like, probably, I watch a lot of TV, and it's probably one of the best shows I've seen in the last, like, five years. Like, I'm not even kidding you. Wow, I'm definitely going to have to check it out. It's very good. Um, My question to you now, and 
Siren is not part of this because that's too obvious. But I have a two-part question. I always love to know because, you know, I, I always refer to, you know, actors and actresses um, and, you know, directors and writers as storytellers. And what I find interesting is a storyteller is going to have, like, there's going to be things that a storyteller is known for or people will, like, remember you from the most. But then there's going to be something that the storyteller, yourself, is going to hold precedence over other things based on the learning experiences, based on who you worked with. So Mike, it's a two part question. What do you think has been the project that um, is more memorable that you've been in based on, you know, the fans or what people would, would kind of like know or associate Tammy Gillis with? And then the second part is what project is the most memorable for you specifically that you've ever worked on? Oh man. <clears throat> so what was the first part of that question? <laughs> so the first, the first part is what do you think is and that's why I said except for Siren, like what do you think people would like know know you more oh, okay. like know me for? Okay. Yeah. Um hmm, that's a good question. Well, like in terms of like the thing that I really enjoyed, I loved being on Ghost Wars because it was something that I did that was so different than a lot of the stuff that I've been able to do before. So, you know, like I get to shoot these guns and I get to jump in helicopters and stuff like that. So for me, that was really, really fun. Um, uh, there's a couple of things that I did years ago and it, more comedy type stuff, but I like, I love doing comedy. And one of the things you may be familiar with, cause it was on HBO Canada, but was less than kind. And I got to play like this super Jekyll and Hyde type I went, to, I went to school with Jesse Camacho. Oh, no way. That's so funny. What I a went small to, world. I went to school with him. Dawson College in Montreal. See you, Jeff. That's awesome. Um, so a lot of people knew me from that role because they, like, really hated me. <laughs> the, and, like, I, I, I love that because it's, like, my job as a storyteller is to solicit some sort of reaction from you. And I remember, like, I shot one scene and the camera operator, who I'd actually known because I'm from Manitoba and we shot it in Winnipeg, was like, I wanted to punch you in the face, Tammy. Like, I can't even look at you right now. And who I was like... You, who did you play? Because I remember I watched that show a lot. Because like, I, I was... um, I was... Uh, oh, goodness. What's her name? I can't remember what her name is. But she was, like, super, super pregnant. And then she'd freaking out because she was pregnant. Um, was, it like a she recur just, was it, like, a recurring role? Yeah. It was in season three and four. Okay. Um, uh, what was her name? Oh, man. I don't remember. Uh, it'll come to me at some weird moment. And so people hated her because she was there. And like, even my mom was like, what? I don't like that character at all because I'm super pregnant and the baby would kick and then I'd just freak out. I'd be like, you know, expletive, 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 go back to sleep. <laughs> and like, for me, it was so fun, but people really did have a strong reaction to her. Um, but I think that's, part of our job as a storyteller is that it's not always these pretty characters that you see that's more you know it's funny because like... i think that and probably one of the coolest pop alternative moments ever was i had fred awanek who was on um cor corner, was on gas. corner gas yeah i know he, fred he came on to talk about <laughs> to, to talk about corner gas animated but you have to understand that like comedy is like my favorite like comedy movies like or number one and like just friends with Ryan Reynolds and oh, yeah, that's, uh, funny. that's probably one of my favorite movies and he's in that and we actually like reenacted like a scene from it <laughs> and you have to understand that was <laughs> a pretty big deal right, um, yeah. but we were talking about the fact that you know there's been there's like a stigma kind of attached to like Canadian shows but I at the same time you look at some of them that are becoming popular outside of Canada right now, like Letter Kenny and Trailer Park Boys and Jits Creek. It, yeah, they're people Working are watching moms. People are watching them outside of Canada, and uh, do I, I'm sure like you can kind of agree that Canada's kind of in the like in the in the right direction in terms of disseminating content outside of the country. 
I'm, you know, I'm really surprised that people haven't caught on more to our com our Canadian comedy shows because look at all of the brilliant comedians that have come from Canada and they're not really recognized until, you know, they become popular in the U.S. But also we had tons of amazing, uh, hilarious shows like SCTV and they're doing a revival of that, which I think is amazing. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's interesting because people are finally catching on to Shit's Creek and Letterkenny and those shows like I watch them i love them they don't have a lot of money but i'm just like even to my agent all the time i'm like i'll do whatever it takes just get me on there i'll fly myself out there <laughs> it's funny because um uh web series and web shows are kind of taking stride as well and um there was a uh, shout out to uh katie Elman and trish Rainoni and bobby del rio um my roommate's an escort i don't know if you've Oh, I haven't heard, heard of heard that. Of that. No. So that, that's a web series, and okay. it's literally about what the title is. Like, it's yeah. literally like her, um, this girl gets a new roommate, and her roommate might or might not be an escort. <laughs> and it's fantastic. And Ellen Dubin has a cameo in it, and she's in oh. Napoleon Dynamite, which is like yeah. one of the best movies ever, in my opinion. So it's it's really cool. And that's you know that and there might or might not be a series based on that web series coming out soon. You know what I mean? Like, well, I that's how know. that's how Letter Kennedy started out, right? They yeah. started out with just these like quick little clips on youtube which i thought were absolutely hilarious like my mm -hmm. sister and i just went down a rabbit hole of watching binging all of them because we're like we grew up around these people <laughs> absolutely you should you should binge my roommates and escort it won't take you okay. long because there's like eight minute episodes and it's just right. like it's it's really funny um but let's get back to siren quickly because okay. i have a few questions in regards to that my first question is about your character deputy stop i want to know what is your favorite thing about playing that character and tell us a little bit about the character and kind of what she's been going through in the show without like, giving out too many spoilers. Yeah, hopefully not too many. Well, what's interesting is like, I feel like she's a woman of very few words, but I feel like uh, Marissa, as long with like a lot of the other female characters, they kind of are finding their power over the course of the season. Um, and like, I love that she 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 seems very much like an introvert, which like I definitely am. And she sort of sits back and takes everything in before she makes any big judgments. Uh, she also very much tries to please her boss constantly and constantly fails. So one of the things that I have really loved is working with Gil um, Birmingham, who's like an unbelievably massive, you know, film actor. Uh, he was in Hell or High Water, um, one of the stars of that movie. And uh, working with him is really, really uh, amazing because he's just like, he's got so much wisdom. And he's just like, he's like, a, he's a big man, a big intimidating man that I have to stand up to sometimes. Um, but one of the, it's interesting because now as the season's going on, it's like, Marissa's, you know, she's not very happy with uh, the old sheriff. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on that just doesn't equate, doesn't make sense, and he's letting people go. And I'm just, I'm, she's not, she's not having it. <laughs> Have you done any conventions yet? No, not yet. I wanted to know about, because I know a few Siren um, co-stars of yours did a, a convention recently. Um... What do you kind of think about that? Because I see people tweeting all the time to you guys saying like, hey, when can we meet you? Are you going to some of the conventions? I mean, the, I feel like the convention, Ottawa Comic Con is happening right now as we speak. And they had Jason Momoa and um, Finn Jones um, from Iron Fist. And it's just it's insane. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, What do you kind of think <laughs> of, the, of the convention landscape? Well, I've never gone to one. Um, I, I've never gone to one as like a guest. I did go to one recently in Vancouver because the Ghost Words writers were doing a panel. So I went to see that and it was like unbelievable. Um, it was really cool to just see how people respond and react to certain shows because part of why we're actors is we want to tell stories and we want to make people feel something in some way you know like i really 
uh, I know if I'm having a really bad day, I can just, you know, put on my favorite rom-com and then instantly the world is different for me, you know? And I did an independent movie a couple years ago and it sort of screened like all over North America and well, all over the kind of the world last year. And it's a really dark movie about this woman that's deeply troubled. But the really amazing thing about that was having people write me and tell me that that movie really changed their perspective on their spouse. Um, and like a couple of people were like just these beautiful emails about, you know, they were in a relationship with their wife um, or partner and it all fell apart and they never ever understood how that person could have behaved in that way. And it wasn't until they saw the movie that they said that they gained some sense of understanding. And I was just like, that is a powerful thing. So uh, like that makes me really, really proud to be an actor. Uh, so when you get to go to the convention and you hear from these people and all these actors that, you know, you've touched their lives in a positive way, like that to me is really incredible. I'm sure there's going to be, it's, I, I guarantee you, like we're going to be done this episode and then like <laughs> next week, like, oh, well, there's a convention opportunity. Like it's going to happen. It's evident. Like it's evident. <laughs> it's going to happen. But like, cause it's cool. Cause we have a lot of pop culture guests on the show and I ask and like, a lot of them do conventions and you know there's been two like hilarious convention stories like Peter Kalamis who does the voice of Goku in Dragon Ball Z and he was in um, he's very funny man <laughs> he's probably one of the funniest like that's an episode for people who want to go back and look at past pop turn of episodes go watch that episode because like Ed Ed and Eddie was one of my favorite sh cartoons growing up and he did the voice of Ralph and just like hearing the stories about how a kid comes up to him and is like oh you did the voice of Goku he's like yeah and he's like let's hear it <laughs> It, and he does it and the kid's like oh must have been a long time ago and Peter's like get that kid out of my face like who got this kid in and my second favorite one was I had an author uh, Delilah S. Dawson who wrote the Star Wars Phasma book and she was at a Dragon Con convention and there was a huge line because they had like four or five like Star Wars authors like a mm -hmm. panel and she was like walking to the like walking past the line and like people were like no no no, no cutting like you can't cut because they didn't <laughs> and she's like no 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 like I you, you're gonna want she's like I'm that person <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really cool but um yeah I, I think I think we'll wrap up but Tad thank you so much for coming on the show I really enjoyed the uh, the dialogue it's 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 really cool um Plug away. Where can people kind of follow you on social media? Oh, yeah. Follow me, please. Follow me on social media on Twitter at Real Tammy Gillis or Instagram at Real Tammy Gillis. Uh, also, Facebook. I have an official Facebook fan page and I try to post different stuff on different stuff. Um, I love engaging with you guys. I love hearing what you have to say. Please tune in and watch the final two episodes of Siren. Let us know what you think. Uh, so, oh, stuff's going down. We got two episodes left. So, Absolutely. And that's real Tavi Gillis, not fake Tavi Gillis. That's right. And the, every, people give me a hard time about that, but I'm like, <laughs> okay, I have a story about that. Um, I was... Uh, uh, shooting something I think and it was the Vancouver Film Festival and a friend of mine was in a lineup to get into this exclusive party right exclusive party you have to be on the guest list and ahead of me she hears oh yeah I'm Tammy Gillis and my friend's like um no you're not no you're not <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like oh, I have an impersonator <laughs> I'm like I hope she behaved herself at that party <laughs> that's awesome well seriously it's been a pleasure thank you so much for coming on the show yeah, you're and welcome I'll let fingers cross for season thank two you. of Siren yes, thanks we will see well this has been right. Popternative catch previous episodes Popternative youtube.com slash Popternative for the video versions and audio only uh Spotify, um, iTunes, and make sure you follow Tammy Gillis on social media. Until next time, this is PDB. It's Tammy Gillis. Sign it off. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.